Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call, and I am joined by my brother, the Gritty Broman, today. How are you, Brent? I'm well, thank you. We have been on a slight hi- hi- hiatus due to spring bear season. Uh, f- so the podcast went through a little lull. It's been, I don't know, 10 days maybe since we last published a show. Um, the, f- the last show went out May 1st. It's almost, it's May 14th. Today. Yeah. So <clears throat> well, a little break. Almost two weeks, whatever. Uh, but we're getting back on the horse, and we're hitting it off. The first show is with my buddy Ryan Lampers, myself. We are in the mountains. We recorded three shows on this recent spring bear hunt that I just completed. We recorded these three shows uh, in the field kind of as the week went on. So we did one right at the start. We did a podcast in the middle, and then we did another podcast at the end. So you can kind of follow along with our emotions as the hunt progresses and uh, the different topics that we cover. And this episode is with Ryan and I. Sly James Sylvester is also there. However, he didn't join us on the first episode, but he is on the second and the third shows. He's a little uh, reluctant to get on the microphone. Yeah, he was outside in the middle of the night taking pictures. (laughs) Right. (laughs) avoiding the microphone. <laughs> uh, these are um, audio only podcasts for the most part, because we couldn't record them in the field like that. We Not were back sacrifice battery for these. Yeah. We were backpacked in and we just couldn't be running. Um, couldn't be running a, another video camera batteries and all that in the back country. So for those that are avid video watchers, sorry, you're just going to have to listen to this one, but it's a good show. So listen to it on YouTube if you want to. Check it out on iTunes. On this podcast episode, we talk a little bit about the difference between spring bear hunting and fall bear hunting. Also, I think we cover early spring versus late spring because this was pretty early. Lots of snow. Uh, bears just barely coming out of their dens. And then we we were fortunate to be able to stay like 11, 12 days. And so we're able to kind of see a lot happens in the springtime. In fact, we could cross a river uh, with our boots off, you know, knee deep. And then a week later, it was a torrential raging river that (laughs) would drown you. So lots of uh, changes happen during that time of year. Things are brown and then then a week later they're green. And um, so the hunts are cool. If you miss the bear hunt, go check it out. Uh, We put a lot of time and effort into the films and they're doing really well, but we'd love to get more support on that. And we, it's a four part series. Uh, Lampers is pushing for a five part series, but right now it's a four part and then maybe a bonus episode. And we published our first episode last Sunday, and the next episode comes out this Sunday. Check that out. Do us a favor and uh, like the video and leave us a comment. We really appreciate that. And if you leave a comment on the video right now, you could be one of the lucky people who wins a new Stealthy Hunter gun cover. Ryan has just come out with a really great product. We used it last year, put it through the paces, and and now he has kind of a slimmed, like, final version that he's brought to market, and they're really cool. They are padded in a way that protects your scope and your action and all that part of the rifle, but there's not really a lot of extra weight with it. It's great for strapping to your backpack and then... You know, it's not just a gun cover. It's sort of a gun case slash gun cover. It gives it more protection than a typical just wrap. Uh, Barrel is protected from getting dirt and crap inside. Um, And there's a few attachments to it that make it so regardless of your setup, you can add add it to a different backpack. Some backpacks, uh, you can rig a pocket for it on the backpack. And so it carries uh, a rifle nice. So check that out. And then uh, we've got a couple more things we want to mention before we get into the show. We used the alpaca rafts on that last trip, and they were amazing. And for those who don't know and haven't been following, check out the videos. And also on the next three episodes, they come up because they're an integral part of this spring bear hunt. We used them to, to float miles down river carrying a heavy load of bear meat and hides. We also used it to just cross the river you guys cross so multiple rivers. rivers. Um, we run into rivers. The spring melt and all the rivers were swollen and we could just like jet across in these rafts. All your gear goes inside the actual like blow up 
part of the RAF. And we literally put hides, meat, guns, packs, like everything inside that raft. And then it's just you then on you top of the up. boat and you blow it up and you shoot down the river. And I just see myself using it all the time. We have all these plans now. Ryan used the caribou, which was five pounds, a legit five pounds. And I think it's perfect for deer and bear hunting. It's perfect. And five pounds is nothing, you know, for, for a whole boat. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not big enough to pack out an elk though. Mm -hmm. And that's where the mule comes in and the mule is seven pounds. Um, there's some other benefits to the mule as well, yeah. but we found like, we didn't like to leave any gear on deck. We tested it with gear on deck. It just it splashes. It can get wet. It could fall out. You know, it's not a huge boat. So we found the cargo flies to be incredible and to be able to put all your gear inside the boat and then just shoot the river is powerful. It's so nice. And your stuff never gets wet. You know, it's just bone dry, your boots, everything. So you can save 10%. And I think those rafts are like, how much is the caribou, Brent? I think the starting, Mule. like the starting price, I think for some of the cheaper ones, it's like 800. 800. But if you want me to look it up. I think a thousand. If you get cargo flies a little extra, if you get that option, which I think if you're a hunter, you just got to do that. Mm -hmm. But I want to say, you know, if you use the code gritty 2020, you're going to save around a hundred bucks or more. The depending meal on, starts at nine fifty. Yeah. How much is the caribou? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing is like when you go to the shop, they got a lot of boats. Yeah. They have a lot of boats depending on what it is you want to do. That's why it's nice that we've been able to test them. I'm fairly certain that the caribou is our go-to boat. And then if I'm elk hunting and I need extra capacity for carrying heavy loads, I'm going to go with a mule. So the caribou is seven ninety five to nine forty five, depending on how you your how extras you should, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so you save about a hundred bucks if you use the code Gritty twenty twenty, and it helps us out because we get a little percentage of um, all those sales, so it helps out the podcast. So we appreciate the sport. Um, so check that out. And then use the code gritty at mountain ops for free shipping on this trip. We used a lot of, I used a lot of ignite and mountain ops has those new electrolytes. Mm -hmm. And I really did like those. They're straight to mouth. You just dump them in like a pixie stick. Mm -hmm. And if you watched our last episode <laughs> of the bear hunting film, you can see Sly eat one. Yeah. They're a little intense at first. You know, it's a lot of sugar. Like Sly was better at like, he just unfazed. I'm not used well, to not dumping. only that, but like he used the mountain air to <laughs> sift through and blow away the stuff that he didn't want. Yeah, it's but it's good. <laughs> They're good, um, and they were handy because I'd fill my bottle up, and then I want to cook with that later. But I also want flavored water, so it was kind of. I, but I don't want to flavor it when I make, you mm -hmm. know, salmon chowder that night. So it's nice because I drink it and just shoot a little bit of both clean water with my electrolyte straight to mouth and it worked well and then uh use the code gritty at seek outside and you save five percent on one of those new dynamic human fibers or not you to get a sill nylon shelter but seek outside's products are unreal and the new u-turn titanium stove that lampers was packing it's so hard to justify leaving it at home and then uh, use the code gritty at heather's choice if you got some backpacking food needs uh, slammed a lot of packaroons on this trip and some salmon chowder dinners. Also like the African peanut stew. The chicken mole is a little too hot for this ombre. I can't do that. I was bartering mine away. Heather just can't help it. She has to make everything a little spicy. Uh, not everything, but mostly everything. And uh, anyway, I'm like, it's James's favorite. I'm like, hey, James, I'll trade you a uh, chicken mole for uh, anything. <laughs> so you know beware of that but uh i think that's it and uh hope you enjoy the show leave us a comment let us know what you think and stay gritty welcome to the gritty podcast this is a audio only show we're doing here it's a little dark yeah i mean i'm here with my guest today ryan lampers and we are on the mountain in the middle of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> yes we are we uh yeah we're in a tent we're actually in the LBO tonight with James, who's hiding from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He's acting like there's some photo op out there. Yeah, we got Sylvester here, <laughs> and uh, he's outside ditching out on the show. 
He's got a headset over there. He's going to put it on. Yeah. We're in a two-week quarantine, at least. We're out here hunting bears. We're, yeah, going full severe quarantine. Social distance at its finest out here right now, so. Might as, might as well do it out here. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, we seem to have found the, the state and, and place and thing that we can do that's legal so <laughs> right <laughs> no one's gonna arrest us for leaving our house no no we're not we're not in washington state so they can't write us tickets right. for fishing or hunting or anything like that so. and we're probably not gonna get covid out here you know i kind of doubt it not unless one of these uh deer we had just run past us a little bit ago yeah got a lot of deer a lot of grouse so far it's our first day out here uh, it's gorgeous. It's quiet. It's just us. I feel alone. I did see a big horn. Yep. Saw some deer. You know what I saw? Well, you know what I didn't see? What's that? Much green grass. You know what I didn't see? A bear. Nope. <laughs> Probably because there's no green grass. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're out pretty early. So last year it was myself, you, and Lusk, and we had a great season. Five bears in how many days was it? Oh. Seven? six yeah something like that yeah surprisingly quick i mean it took a while for the pack out everything to be finalized but yeah 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 that one evening alone we put three three down in 30 minutes so (laughs) that helped that was wild we never did talk about it on the podcast i mean folks saw the film but Mm. we never did talk about it yeah um we we did we, we we touched on a little bit mostly we covered gear Right. And we were going to sit down together and kind of recap the actual hunt, but never did get around to it. Yeah, I seem to recall we, we did the gear. We were going to talk about the hunt, but it was real windy. Yeah. And we were outside trying to get this done at a park. Yeah. And um, no, it just never never did quite happen, but great time. Great hunt. Going to be hard to beat that hunt. As much as I'd like to like duplicate and repeat, yeah. it's going to be tough to beat that one. Yeah. Well... <laughs> It's day one, folks. So we're gonna we're gonna podcast as much as we can when we're up here and kind of let you know what's going on and kind of take you through the hunt. But let's talk a little bit about last year compared to this year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think number one is time frame. Um, we were here last year. Gosh, I can't remember the exact day we came in. Must have been May. When did we hike in there? It was probably. I think it was May th- May third. Third, fourth, fifth, somewhere mm-hmm. in there. So um, we are today, April seventeenth. Mm-hmm. So we're a little early, and definitely a lot more snow this year. Not too far up up the hill here, and it's just yeah, just these couple weeks of difference is drastic. Like last mm-hmm. last year, we had a lot of green. We had meadows, parks. You know, it was pretty easy to find salad bowls and, and find the bears but right now i think um what looks like to me anyways we're gonna have to do a lot of miles to try to find try some. to find some um and we're gonna be looking into you know areas where they're not gonna be too far from their den you know we're not gonna be coming across any lush green grass parks on this one uh, unless you know we do have some days well, yeah we do have some days and it is gonna be sunny like today yeah it can, it, you know, surprisingly could green up pretty quick. Yep. Um, there is a tint of, of green here. It's just not very long and, um, you know, there's no, there's no flowers out, which typically right. you start seeing. But think about it. We, root. we got it here around, let's say the fifth, fourth, fifth last year. It was really green. It was. And in pockets. And we saw bears cruising. Yeah. We found bears. Yeah. Yeah. I think the first first bear we saw last year just moseying along Mm -hmm. uh polar bear we called him because he's really long big jet black and and yeah he was just cruising across uh well he was kind of in a meadow when we first saw him then he just motored through a bunch of boulders and um crossed water and up the other side and it was like he it was like he was in his full rut he was like looking Mm -hmm. for something he was cruising and then but then we found pockets of bears yeah that were just kind of hunkered and because there were three bears in the little hole where you shot yours. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, how how long do you think those bears have been out of their dens? 
by the time we got there. Because let's say we had been a week earlier last year. The day we showed up, they were out and about. They were out and about and feeding like they've been feeding for weeks. Right. A a week or two. Yeah. It seemed like it. So we're actually not, we are a bit early, but within 10 days, I would think we're hitting, Yeah, we're kind of about the same as we were last year. We're probably just on the cusp of early, but I think, you know, we're in the window where we're, we're going to see some bears. Um, We're going to do whatever it takes, however far we got to go and to find some bears, whether that's looking on the snow line or, know. or uh, hoping to get lucky the, uh, in some some type of green yeah, little park the, that comes the dif- up. The difference this year so far, just in day one glassing, is I'm looking <laughs> in caves on the top yeah, <laughs> rocky yeah. bluffs instead of in green basins. Yeah, I was, I was kind of looking on the north slope, just looking for any tracks, like just anything coming off a den or out of a den or whatever. Yeah, it's, just, it's definitely a lot different. I mean, there's a lot of snow this year. It's surprisingly mm-hmm. deep. It, living down where, where I do, we didn't get much snow down in the lower country, but yeah. boy, it piled up in the high country. Well, we knew it was going to be magical this year, probably if we had hit similar dates as mm-hmm. last year. Uh, but you know, there's this sense of adventure. Like, I'm curious what happens right now. You know, this time of year, if you come this early, what what, what do you see in that case? Right. Well, and I think that has something to do with it, right? Last year, we we um, we got in and didn't take us too long to find bears. I mean, we had to do some work to get mm-hmm. to where they were, um, but we found them and it felt like they'd been out for a while. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we come in a little earlier and and now it feels like, well, they're not even out at all. <laughs> But I think any day now they're gonna they are gonna be uh, we are gonna find them and it is gonna get greener as we're here. So um, I yeah, I don't know I really can't. I mean the the lack of greenery is drastic, definitely <laughs> alarming. You know, yeah, that for sure. I mean bears love grass, so they're gonna be wherever that is, wherever that green salad bowl is, and right. So and there's a fine line too because. Uh, you know, Lusk, who was with us last year, Jeff. Uh-huh. Now, we had went into a spot later in the season. Right. And we felt like we were way too late. There was green everywhere. You could find big chartreuse salad bowls, every little hole. And, uh-huh. and you know, they were thinking, well, they were, some of those boars were starting to rut and cruise country. And we'd see bears, but you'd see them and never catch them. They yeah. just were crushing it. And so, yeah, there's like, uh, there's like a window. So I don't know. I, I feel like this is going to be definitely a little more of a challenge, but let's face it. <laughs> the world is a little crazy right now and we got some days and, yeah. um, I think we'll, the truth we'll figure is, it out. We're all kind of locked in the house. Yeah. And so uh, I wanted to take some of those days and go to the mountain instead. If I, I, I got to wait to get, <laughs> yeah, if I got to stay locked. <laughs> If I got to stay love, in lockdown, you know. Yeah, I love the wife and kids, but um, it's been quite a few weeks now of, you know, not really doing much in town or mm-hmm. no socialing, which is, I'm accustomed to, I'm fine with it. <laughs> but, you know, the wife's at home and trying to work from there. And yeah, it's definitely bizarre, but I could not wait for this one. You know, we already had a trip canceled prior to, to this know. trip. And so it feels like... Uh, been ready to yeah. hunt for a while. <laughs> New Zealand went down in flames. It sure did. Yeah. Well, we could have gone, maybe, and then got stuck there. Yeah. Would that have been so bad? <laughs> <laughs> could have been a while. Uh, you know, yeah. But man, would we have learned that area. Yeah. We would have been uh, very, very well seasoned on New Zealand if... Because we were scheduled to go. residents. <laughs> yeah. What is it? April 17th. We were scheduled to go... April 1st? Mm-hmm. Somewhere in there. I can't yeah. remember. Did they cancel our flights or did... They canceled it. Yeah, they, they shut it down, right? Yeah. yeah. There was a point where you could go and you just had to stay in quarantine for two or three weeks yep. before you could enter 14 there. 14 days and then yeah. and then they shut down entry. So uh, they canceled it for us. So on the bear hunting, Ryan, why, why, what, why do you want to, why do you like hunting bears? What is it about bears? Oh boy, there's a lot of reasons. Um, I think you and I, I think, are in agreement on the meat part of bears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's one of the first meats to disappear out of my freezer because I love it. My f- whole family loves it. It's like whether it's canned or froze or whatever, 
however you do it, it's just really good. So there's that. And I'm, yeah, I, I got meat in the freezer right now. I got quite a bit of elk and mule deer, uh-huh. um, but I'm out of bear. And so I, I want to get some more. And then, um, you know, two, it's the adventure of it. Uh, I mean, we make it more of an adventure than it probably needs to be because <laughs> we do a lot of hiking, a lot of walking, and we get ourselves into some just epic, unbelievable country to do it. Uh, not necessary, but it really makes for a fun, exciting adventure. And uh, that's kind of the second part. It's, it is the, the meat. It's also adventure. And this time of year, you know, everything's coming to life out here and it's just fun watching bears, uh, you know, cruising through these meadows and parks and chewing up salad all day. Look, I like hunting everything. I think you're the same way. <laughs> yeah. There's something about bears, getting to watch bears out in these wild places and just seeing them do the goofy things they do. It's a lot of fun. Well, when it's not the springtime, mm-hmm. you know, and, and think about how often we're both out and about and how few bears we see. Mm when it's not the spring. Yeah. There's something special about this time of year with bear where they're just out in full force in a way that you you don't get this opportunity. It's like the elk rut, you know. Right. That's what this is for bears. It's that they come out of the dens and, and they're just out. Yeah, and where the where the sun is hitting and, and getting those grasses really lime green and chartreuse, I mean, it's practically glowing, it seems like. Mm-hmm. That's where you find them. And then there's, there's this little window and they go into the rut and then there's green everywhere. Yeah. You know, it under the timber and they'll, they'll typically not be seen out in the open very much. So you tend to find them, you know, they'll, well, you don't even see them, but they're in the timber down in the holes. They're getting just as much green down there and they don't have to be out in the open where we can put eyes see on them. them. So there's something special about watching a bear there. You know, I'd say this all the time. A lot of dudes are way into horned game, like a deer and elk, and so am I. But for me, bear is right up there in the mix, like near the top. I love, I just, there's something really badass about a bear. Absolutely. <laughs> Couldn't agree Especially more. a big, gnarly <laughs> one with a hump, you know. And Yeah. Well, and again, like, I mean, you can look around at where we're at. People don't know where we're at, but this is some gnarly country. And when they're just coming out of their dens, uh, a lot of these big old rocky, you know, just crudded up north slopes. And it's just, uh, man, it's just a picture of wildness. And when you get to see them and they're just cruising and and rolling back into those timber pockets, um, man, I don't know. Something about it and the time of year that we're doing it. Yeah, that the time of year is big. It's mm-hmm. spring, dude. It's like yep. we've been cooped up winter time and all that. And now yeah. you're seeing the sunshine and this nice breeze and grouse you're... are starting to drum and yeah, everything's coming to life and we're right on the forefront of it. It's it's pretty brown, <laughs> but you can see the grass is starting to come up a little bit. So we're close. And it's chilly like yeah. in the mornings and the evenings, but in the afternoon it's t shirt kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it got warm warm today and then it's yeah probably freeze tonight we're hoping really hoping for warm weather because uh-huh. we we need those uh we, we need those green. flowers to start popping up that's always the sure sign that it's bear season yeah you know have you hunted bears during the the rut a lot or mm, not really i have a few times but um they're again they're hard to track down sometimes mm. unless you see them in the right spot. If you see them with, you know, a sow and, and they've, they've slowed down. But a lot of times I've found that you just see those old boars and they're just moving. It's a different thing. Yeah. Chasing. It is. I, I did uh, a rut bear hunt in British Columbia, one of probably four years, five years now. And, uh, you know, there's just the density of bears there is just much higher, but we got on to a couple of bears that were with sows, you know, following those sows, breeding those sows. And, and, uh, they're just out of their mind, pissed off, hot all over that sow, you know, they wolf at you and stuff and, but they don't really run from you. They kind of like challenge you a little bit. And right. it was a pretty intense experience chasing bears during the rut. Hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of like pop their shoulders and their jaws and they like, Oh yeah. They, they like a gorilla, like they pound the ground and right. 
I ch- I followed this one for like 400 yards and I, c- I was trying to get within 30 yards or so for the bow shot. And every time I did, he was, you know, he was, he just spread it back out to 40, 50, 60. And, but I, he just didn't, I just, I was pretty much running and jogging after him and he was just moseying along. And hmm. Then he turned and looked at me and watched for a while. And then he turned around and started walking away again. And, but he never, he would not run at all. And I had a bow and arrow in my hand. I'm like this close to shooting him multiple times. And, and, uh, but he was intense, hmm. you know, and didn't really care too much about him. Just a different animal, different right. than other times of the year. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, um, like, like we talked about, I mean, the spring hunt's fun. It's a lot of fun this time of year, but, um, Probably what I've done more of anything is fall bear hunting. Just I've never of fall I, bear hunted. I was going to yeah, ask you about that next. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's again, it's just different. You know, you're you're at different elevations. You're like right now we're we're quite a ways back in, but we're kind of looking at the bottoms. You know, down in the holes and where the grass is starting to green up, and looking for little parks and meadows and whatnot. And then, um, you know, of course in the fall, uh, my experience has always been, I go to the tops, you know, I go looking for those, yeah. those huckleberry fields at the tops and the blueberries and all that. And, um, that's where you see good numbers of bears, you know, those, when those berries are popping, you get a good barrier. Boy, you usually see multiple bears hmm. in certain places. And Washington was always real good to me for that hunt. It, I think it opened up. Oh, August 1st and then August 15th on the east side. And, um, man, what a fun when the berries were right and, uh, and they were actually at the right elevation Man, and talk about fat. I mean, it, you know, these, these spring bears are delicious. They're really good meat on them, but there's nothing like a fall bear that's been in a berry field for a couple of weeks. Like just scarfing <laughs> down these sweet carbs. That just carbs. makes me hungry. Dude, it I mean, does. Yeah, that's where I'd get, that's where I would get all my rendered fat for, from hmm. is, uh, just one bear from the fall and you can get so many jars rendered down. I mean, you're literally digging that knife five, six inches down before you hit that back strap and it's just Jeez. thick and, you know, again, it's just different. Uh, it's the later, later time yeah. of year and that's yeah. kind of the last time you see them out is when they're chewing on berries in those big berry patches and, and then they disappear again. They get into the timber. I've never hunted bear in April. Have you? Yeah, I have. Back in back in Washington. Yeah, we had to draw spring tags back there, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. But it was you know it was always a little bit early, and it was always way better in May, like it is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, you just see more. I mean, let's face it. A lot of the bears right now they're still denned up and they're not moving far, if at all. So. You know, there's lower elevations where they're they're out and about, but yeah, it could happen any day. So we were messing with our gear today, sorting out our food, uh, getting our packs ready, hiking in, and here we are. Um, pack weight for a six day trip. Where do you think you're at? <laughs> Uh, I'm not as much as you cause I'm not a camera guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like the bane of my existence. Oh, just your camera gear, man. That's, uh, that's brutal. Um, I'm low fifties. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not where you're at with the, with the camera stuff and the long lens and all that. I pity camera guys, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, my pack's not that bad. I'm you plus 10. Yeah. Yep. The the cameras and stuff are right around eight to ten pounds. Yeah, but and there's no way around it. There isn't. <laughs> no, I mean, food <laughs> like your food bags are about two pounds a piece. Yeah, um, pound and a half to two pounds a piece. And extended day trips. Yeah, you just it just adds up. And you know, sometimes like trips like this, you bring a little extra gear, um, especially if you want to get across creeks, rivers, stuff like that. You kind of have to be careful this time of year with runoff. Mm-hmm. Um, Gosh, right now, you know, the cricks aren't swollen at all, but you could have a couple of days of hot sun and they'll be swollen pretty good. You're right, right. We we uh, we t- discussed this um, heading up river because we can float down. Right. And we have, we each have our own alpaca yep. pack raft. So. Which will be very nice to be able to float down. Right. Especially if we got a couple bears. 
if we go up like eight miles or something, yeah, the ability to float back with bears. That's nice, huh? <laughs> it's going to be, yeah. Well, it's a load off, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it just, yeah. it's, it is fun. To, it, it, the, the boat adds so much because my yep. boat is seven pounds. Yep. My raft is seven pounds. That's not, for what it is, that's nothing. No, not when it could, it could float, you know, you plus everything <laughs> and right. bear and hide it's down hundred pounds of meat those eight miles real hide, real fast yeah. so yeah i ran a little bit i'm i'm in a little bit smaller yeah alpaca i think my capacity is 400 i believe and it's right at about five pounds so mm. I saved a couple of pounds but i lost 100 pounds in in, in weight right. i think that's where it's at is about 400 is what they recommend you have the caribou caribou yeah I'm very curious to see how that works. I have the mule. I think it's. I think it Five, is 500, 500 pounds. pounds. Yeah. So I'm excited. I mean, look, Brian. Either way, like we may be a little early and we may not see a lot of bears <laughs> the first part gonna of our trip. Have some fun. We're gonna have some fun <laughs> and we're gonna get some miles in. Practice. We're gonna get hone some skills. There's people. Think about it this way. There's a lot of people irritated. <laughs> that we're doing this and they're not able to because of what's happening out there. So yeah, no, true. It, it truly fortunate Definitely to grateful. Get, get some miles on the legs and to be able to do this while others are stuck at home. Definitely. Yeah. So, so the boat is a better design and better for what we're doing than last year's boat. Oh man. Last year's so boat much better. 45 pounds or something. 45 pounds. <laughs> we had to ferry <laughs> oh, one at man. a time. I mean, Most. even with three guys, like, hauling something like that is mm -hmm. taking turns. It's rough. It's real rough. And that's not hauling at long distances. But, no, these things, I mean, you, like you say, we can we can run 8, 10 miles. We can mm -hmm. float it back and hopefully have some meat to throw in it. It's just completely different. And, honestly, it's it's way safer because we, um, you know, we could – we could probably just, you know, we could cross a lot of these places mm -hmm. in just chest waders mm -hmm. if we were careful about where we did it. But, you know, we might right be on now. the other side of something and then that heat hits mm -hmm. and we are having going to have some hot days come in. And then we're going to be on that other side and we won't be getting across, yeah. back across with the waders. So um, because these boats are so light, five to seven pounds, it's not that big of a stretch to just keep them with you. Yeah. Always. Right. So. Absolutely. And the other thing that, for me, my load decreased dramatically uh, with the new rifle. Yeah. Absolutely. Shave it where you can. And that was a, that's a big, big piece of keeping that pack weight low. I don't know what you shaved yours, how many pounds, but mine is six and a half <sighs> rifle and scope. Six and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Pretty lightweight. I got mine down eat. around two pound, two pounds lighter. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and and if I make a few more cuts, mm -hmm. um, if I go with a little lighter scope, yep. I'll shave six ounces. Uh, I could shave a little you, bit. You could ditch the sling and maybe mm -hmm. look at possibly a different bipod. Shave some ounces there for sure. For sure, yeah, but. Because and I'm otherwise, we're, we're, we're our should weigh identical, <laughs> except for the yeah, you yeah. know the accessories, and so we're because we're both we both have the same gun, and yep. I shot uh, for those who were following. You know, I used the Christensen Arms three hundred Win Mag last year, and I love that gun, but yep. but uh, it, it's like carrying around. It's just heavy. It's a cannon, and uh, <laughs> this new one is the Weatherby Backcountry Ti. And it's 4.9 4. pounds. Yep. So. And I've been shooting that thing a lot. And. Um, it's a 6.5 RPM. Yep. 6.5 RPM. And man, I mean, that it's it's a shooter. It's it's fun to shoot. It is fun. And, you know. <laughs> I feel like a little sniper with, with this thing. Even with a very light, you know, you got to be a little wary. You, you figure out it's so lightweight. Is it going to shoot as well? Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. This thing shoots. I mean, for what we do, we're not. Um, I haven't ranged it out to a thousand or anything like that. I just don't. Um, I'm sure there's some guys that could speak to that a lot better. But you know, I'm 500 and in, and I don't. I don't take 500 yard shots either. But yeah. shooting rocks, and uh, I've been just shooting it a lot this last couple months. 
and especially the last few weeks and it just shoots fantastic yeah um, even as lightweight as that thing is at six and a half pounds i'll put together it's man it's just tack driver six and a half pounds is unreal yeah and that's that's that 4.9 and you know the uh the bases and rings i threw on it and um i think my scope is 18 19 ounces there so yeah it's very very lightweight yeah that i mean that's pounds that you're i was able to get rid of big deal absolutely no, you're I just, always, I mean, look how much we spend like for shaving a few ounces here and there, mm-hmm. on different things and bags. And, um, when you can eliminate pounds, that's a big, big deal for sure. The only air that one of the areas I'm struggling with is eliminating camera. <laughs> like it's hard to do with, a, you kind of have to have a long lens. That's 400 millimeters. It's heavy. It's like, it's like a spotter, another spotter. Got to have a little bit heavier duty tripod to film with yeah to ho- hold the weight and everything of this with the ex- doubler and everything and it just gets to add up dude dude yeah <laughs> i see it like and i'm like okay. i see that crud you're throwing in like stuffing in your pack with that lens and all that and i don't envy that at I all i don't i don't know how i could you know i got my kit pretty lean mm. you know batteries too you know how i figured that out but it's just part of uh i, I want to capture it so you know you just got to lift a little harder than i do in the off season to <laughs> carry your camera equipment <laughs> i don't have to carry it so i'll just go hiking uh, <laughs> you may have to i mean i might not be able to get out i mean it's just heavy yeah you know ryan might have to just start carrying like <laughs> james is james is look at him too he's he's still avoiding this conversation <laughs> he's circling the tent yeah <laughs> Uh, acting acting like he's getting these these epic star slash tent shots. Well, last year after doing our hunts, um, you know, going out with Dwayne, running the Cimarron, yep, with the stove, the titanium stove, that was another game changer. Yep, move. You have the new U-turn stove. Yeah, and that way is what? Oh man, I I don't know the exact weight on that. I should. I do know. I believe it shaved 12 ounces um, off of the previous lightweight titanium stove. Which I thought was two pounds. Yeah, it's it's, so, it's super light. I mean... So it's a legit sub three pound oh, yeah. setup to use the titanium stove oh, yeah. and the Cimarron. Dyne- yep. Dynema. Yeah, and you know, I think... It's a uh, castle. Depending on what stove pipe you run. Um, mm-hmm. Like I've got the seven foot pipe, so it's a little bit longer. But yeah, the U-turn is, is again, you just shave, shave a pile of weight and burns just as hot. And, uh, and no, I love that thing. I've been using it a lot lately on some shed trips and whatnot. And uh, yeah, no, I'm sold on it for sure. I see no... No, no downfalls to having those. What it is is it's three less sides, and they ran kind of the stovepipe material. Right. It's not quite stovepipe material, but it's, it's genius. It's like it, and they run that around the three sides, um, and then you still have the front where you load the wood mm-hmm. into. But yeah, genius design on it, and I I would have never guessed they could have shaved that many ounces off of I know. what was already ridiculously I know. lightweight. So now the Cimarron with that, and again, you know, I think the Cimarron is a pound and a half, uh, the tent material itself. Mm -hmm. And then that, yeah, sub two pound uh, medium U-turn stove and quite a kit. And really, no matter what weather comes your way, you're, you're fine. Yeah. And with the new sleeping bags and pads and yeah, you can get, you can, man, it's not like what our parents grew up with. And it's crazy, Brian, because every time I think, like, man, there's no way it could get any lighter, somebody comes out with something and it actually does. And food is just, uh, I mean, it's, it's. A, I don't know how you'd beat that. It's a pound and a half, two pounds per day. You eat it. It's, yeah, it's about, <laughs> My, hopefully you can build your nutritional value up and what you're packing in and. That's just how you make it better. But my food was one point six a day. But then when I added like some drink mixes and emergency and yep. a few other things, it creeps up to. I'm rounding up, but it's just under two pounds. Yeah. So yeah, do the math on like a ten day trip. It jacks your uh-huh. somewhat lightweight 
pack into a pretty heavy pack. That's why you just got to kill on the last day so you can pack out with having eaten all your food, maximize your entire hunt. Yeah, well, we work hard on that food, too. I don't want to leave it on the mountain. It's, no. like, yeah, it's a lot of dehydrating and <laughs> yeah. jerky making and leathers and yeah, fruit and all that stuff. So We should talk about that tomorrow, you know, kind of the food kit, because uh, we have a lot of similarities. I just think it's an area where so many dudes are missing out, yeah. whether you backcountry hunt or not, just just hunting. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that tomorrow. Let's yeah. talk about what you and I have. And then um, we'll have James James here, and let's talk about (laughs) what James has. (laughs) It'll be awesome. Because there's some stuff I saw Mm -hmm. floating around in his his food kit there that, (laughs) oh, boy, I don't know. Yeah, we need to talk a little bit, too, about uh, James, his photography kit and what he's got going on there, too. So, yep, let's go to bed. He he managed to avoid this conversation, but we'll snag him tomorrow. He did. I'm fading. Yeah. Like we got up so early this morning and left home, so. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in, folks. And uh, tune in to the next one. And hopefully, Ryan, we're coming back with a punch tags. Absolutely. <laughs> Stay gritty, folks. <laughs>